In this video we're going to run you through how you can obtain volumes with a civil site design grading string. Now in this particular example we have created a single grading string and applied a basin style template. So as you can see here it's very straightforward we have a, a section up uh, which is two meters across and up at 50 percent then we have a section across two meters at three percent then we have a batter on the last leg and that is a one in two batter so that's basically the template we have applied to this particular grading string the target surface for the batters is a civil 3d surface now this is important to note because if we want to be able to take volumes from the uh, surface of the grading string versus this particular surface, Civil Site Design won't be able to do this, and we'll see this in action if I go volumes and click compute. Um, you'll get a message to basically say that it's not possible. Both surfaces need to be Civil Site Design surfaces, and we actually tell you what the solution is here. What we recommend you do is to convert or copy the surface that you're using. In this case, this would be the combined NS and LiDAR from Civil 3D and actually copy it over to Civil Site Design. And the way that this is done is to use this particular tool here, which is Civil 3D to Civil Site Design Surface. Now I've already run this command, but you can see here as, when, as soon as we do this, I'm able to pick any Civil 3D surface and have that passed over to Civil Site Design. In Surface Manager, what we'll end up doing is prefixing that converted surface with CSD. This is really important when you're using Civil Site Design uh, and Civil 3D, that you don't have two surfaces both with the same name. So in this case, we've got CSD combined NS and LiDAR, and the original is sitting in tool space, but they're named differently, so the software will accept that. Because I have that copy, that is the surface I can use to act as the target surface for my grading string. So if I just swap that over now and click Create Update, software will now go ahead and reference that as its target surface instead, which, as we know, will be identical but now when it comes to undertaking the compute volumes, I'm now able to obtain a volume between those two surfaces. Going forward, any edits I make to that grading string, that volume figure will now be updated. If I want to obtain a volume of water at a set level, we have to do this by creating a second grading string to act as our water surface. So to show you how to do this, we're gonna close down the grading string form and you can see here I've created a polyline which is offset from the original polyline and inside the basin. And let's just have a quick look at a cross section here just to show you how this will look. This is a cross section of my grading string and what we're aiming to do is to basically have a grading string sit in here and then obtain a volume between the water level and the basin surface itself. So what we're gonna do is close this down and show you the, how this is done. So first of all, we have to create a template. The template is going to be very simple. It's just a batter. We're gonna go template options and go create new template in local library. Click okay, and we'll call this water surface and click okay. Then all we're going to do is to apply a batter. Now, if you imagine this batter is gonna be attached to the edge of this polyline, which will become a grading string, and then it'll be battering to the surface of the basin. So as this is a water surface, it needs to be extremely flat. So I'm gonna go and click on left side, slope batters, and put one in a very, basically a very, very large number. Now at this point, you may not know which side uh, the batter should go on but because we have the option of reversing the string in the grading string form we can change that in a minute so what we're going to do is click OK and we're going to create a grading string from this polyline so I'm going to select that polyline you can see there the direction arrow is pointing anti-clockwise so at the moment our batter is going to be on the left hand side which is basically going to be a bit of a mess so in a minute we'll be reversing the direction of this to resolve it we're going to pop a name in for the string, water surface. The template we're going to be picking, which is our water surface template. The target surface is the basin. Okay, so this is what we want to, to create the, uh, the water surface to make sure the batter batters to the basin. The initial elevation, well, we'll put that as, say, 30. The elevation of the base of the uh, basin is already at 29, so we'll raise it up by a meter. The spacings is really how often it will create a sample and a batter so actually the more detail the better in this example if you're doing a very very large structure I wouldn't recommend you um, decrease that value 
Now at this point, all we're going to do is click on Create Update. And hopefully you may have seen in the background, we'll just um, zoom in in a second, there is now the inclusion of a batter. Which you can maybe just see here. Okay, so there's the edge of that batter. Now, the problem is that the batter is actually being transferred from the opposite side. So what we need to do is reverse this. So we're going to click on reverse. And now we've done that, we'll just try the grips again. So all I'm doing is left clicking on the line work to generate these particular grips. So I'm going to left click, there we go. Now we can see that the batter is being transferred from that code all the way out. Um, to validate this, what I'll do is just go to toggle display. And then in toggle display, we now have a water surface. I'm going to click on mesh and click OK. Now, if I go volumes and then click on compute volumes, this will actually be providing me with a value in fill. And this is actually the, the value of the volume of water that is now stored between an elevation of um, 30 and the basin level of 29. And to look in more detail, we'll just close this down and open up a cross section of our basin. And in here, all we need to do is go to the display tab and we'll go to the show other objects button and we'll go add surface and we'll ask it to show the water surface. You can see I've already got the basin in here. The reason why is because uh, when you're looking at a cross section of a string, generally what it shows you are the codes on that. Now, obviously with a basin, that's got an entire surface and stretches out to the other side. So I've actually asked it to show the basin in here. I'll show you a little tip in a minute as to how you can show the full extent of um, your basin very shortly. We've got the water surface shown, we'll click OK. And there is our water surface literally on the top of that berm there. So if we decide to then make a change to our uh, water surface here, let's just go and make that change. And we'll make, put that down to say 29 and a half, click Create Update. You'll have seen in the background that model will have updated and on the volumes tab, we can now go and click on the volumes tab and click on compute volumes. We now have a reduced amount of fill. To refresh the uh, cross-section window, all we're going to do is to simply just scroll back and forth, just somewhere around the ribbon, just to refresh. Now, if you do want to show more than simply a very narrow width in your cross-section window, grading strings are using a nominal width of 15 meters left and right of the center line in the cross-section view. And this is a default, which you can't change in the grading string form. If you go to Active Drawing Settings, and in Active Drawing Settings, go to the Row Details tab. Now, normally when you create a road string or a profile string, you're prompted down the bottom of the form for section widths, which is normally 15 meters. This value is set in here. Now that 15 meters is the same value that is already being used for this grading string. So all I've done is updated that value to 30 and then create updated the grading string, which will in turn increase or decrease, depending on what numbers you put in, the width of your cross-section view.